Okay everyone, today I'm going to be seeing if the internet can be transferred through water. Before I do this video, let me give you a little background to where this comes from. In my last video I posted about waterproofing water, somebody commented in the comment section, they said, next video, can we transfer Wi-Fi using water instead of cables? Now what they said doesn't make a whole lot of sense because Wi-Fi isn't transferred over cables but I got the gist of what they meant. Basically, they wanted to know if you could transfer the internet through water instead of using cables. So in order to test this today, I'm going to be cutting my internet cable in half and then sticking both ends in water and seeing if the internet signal can get through the water or not. So even though nowadays most of us use the internet through our cellular plan or through the Wi-Fi in our house, that internet still has to get to our Wi-Fi router and has to get to the cell phone antennas through physical cable. And the physical cables themselves are actually what make up the internet. For example, to get Wi-Fi in my house, the last mile is usually transmitted through a coaxial cable. And it comes out of this little port here. And the coaxial cable that brings the internet to your house looks like this. So on the inside of it here, you have this wire and on the outside you have this metal sheath. And the metal sheath in here provides insulation and it stops interference from other electromagnetic signals. So this one wire right here connects you to the entire internet. So all the information, everything you use, everything you download or upload goes through this little wire here. But what information is actually being transferred through this wire? Well, it's basically just a bunch of ones and zeros, meaning that there's a signal turning on and a signal turning off. But the transferring of ones and zeros through this cable or the transferring of bits is not just as simple as turning a voltage on and off in the cable because you wouldn't be able to transfer much information that way. But a smarter way to do it is use a radio frequency. So these cables here actually transmit a radio frequency. So basically, it's just a frequency that goes through this wire here. It's an alternating current that moves the electrons back and forth, back and forth really fast at a specific frequency. And you can alter the amplitude of that frequency, and when you do that, you can count it as a one or a zero. So basically, by sending a radio frequency through this wire here, you can get an output of transferring bits, or ones and zeros. And that's how the internet is transferred through this cable here. So normally what happens when I plug in a normal cable to the port here, and then I turn on my modem, I should see these specific lights here. And when you finally see this last light light up, then you know that you're connected to the internet. And then the internet signal is transferred through this cable here to my Wi-Fi router. And this will give me a wireless signal throughout my whole house. Now if I run my speed test here, can see that I'm getting around 23 megabits per second and around 7 megabits per second uploading. So this means that I can download around 23 million bits per second. That means 23 million ones and zeros. In order to test this, I've taken my coaxial cable here and I've spliced it in half and I've cut the main cable in the middle here. So this is no longer connected. If I connect it now, I'll never connect to the internet because there's this big gap here. But I'm gonna connect these cables here with these alligator clips. And then I'll put one in each end of the water and see if the internet signal can actually go through the water. Okay, so let's plug in our other cable now. And I'm gonna connect the other end of it into my modem. Okay, so you can see my spliced cable here. So the first thing we need to do before we try this is to add salt to this water because water in and of itself is not conductive, so we're not gonna be able to transmit the radio frequency through it unless we make the water a little bit more conductive. So let's put some salt in it. Okay, we're ready to go. You can see on the modem here, the little world is not lit up. That means we're not connected to the internet. Let's see what happens when we put the cables in the water. Okay, transmitting the internet through water instead of cables. Three, two, one. Okay, let's see if we connect. Let's watch our modem here. Come on. Oh, I think it's going. It's connected there. Let's see if the world starts lighting up. I think it is. No way. Here it goes, let's see. Come on, you can do it. Oh, it keeps starting over. Let's see here. Let's 
move these a little bit closer together. Oh, I think it's going. I think we're connected. Okay, let's do a test. I think we're really connected to the internet. <laughs> so it's going through the water. Let's do our speed test before we lose the connection. Okay, try it again. Are we connected? Oh, contacting the server. <laughs> Zero megabits per second. Oh, it went <laughs> 0.14 megabits per second. There it goes. <laughs> it's getting it. Six megabits per second now. It did it. Look, 0.14 megabits per second and three megabits per second upload. So the internet does work. You can see me going. You can see me going to the Action Lab page here. So is it possible to actually transfer the internet through an entire ocean just by sticking two cables in the water at either end of the ocean? Well, most likely not, because over that many miles of ocean, you're going to degrade your signal so much that you'll basically be left with nothing. Well, thanks everybody, that was fun to try. It was a fun challenge to try to send the internet through water. And if you haven't subscribed to the Action Lab yet, remember to hit that subscribe button and hit the bell to be notified when my latest videos out. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.